Good day, Fred friends. We have got an absolute beauty in today. And you look at it and you think, oh, that's nice. Oh, that must be a Gibson. Way well, be completely wrong, it's not a Gibson. It's an Epiphone. But what a beautiful Epiphone this is, eh? Um, Epiphone Limited Edition. Korea made. Uh, it has deluxe tuners on there. It's got an S on there, I wonder if it's Charla, probably Charla. It's got an S stamped on there. Uh, the prefix on there is letter I, now letter I, Korean, is that the, uh, I'm wondering what plant that is. I'll have to go and have a look at that in a bit and I'll come back and let you know, I normally know. Um, I thought it was a 99, it's a 98, June 1998, the 142nd guitar built that month. So there you go. Uh, what an absolute beauty. I've had Gibsons in. This looks just like a Gibson front on, doesn't it? Absolutely beautiful guitar. It's got a bit of a scratch down there, but you know, I'm not worried about a bit of some indentations down there. This has come in, it wants a nut replacing. That's got a crack nut on there. The action is insanely low on this. I know we play a light solo action. I says there's low, mate, and there's that. I says no wonder you get a fret buzz. I've been across with a fret rocker. There is at least five, what was it, five or six frets? There's a, a millimetre of relief in that and there's still five or six frets all rocking. So I've said that needs a fret level. Now he wants his back for Thursday, so I've got a rush job on this. So I'm gonna take Wednesday off and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this guitar on Wednesday. Um, it needs a fret level, it's gonna have a fret level. Fret level, recrown and polish. New nut on there, new set of strings. Um, and we'll get it all ready for Thursday. So do with the action you know what you will or what you recommend. I'm going to get it as low as I possibly can without any fretboards. It's why I've recommended a slightly lighter string because the, the thicker the, the string, the more vibration you're going to get. And they don't just vibrate left and right, they go up and down and sideways. And the lower you have your strings or the lower you have your action, the more chance you've got of your frets or your, your strings bouncing on your frets and buzzing. It's also got some dead notes around about 12, 13 fret area. I says, well, it's because you're so low. You know, we'll get the action right on there. But it has got high frets as well, so we need to sort them out. So one I'm looking forward to doing, because I've only got Fender types in at the moment, and this being a Gibson type, it gives me a bit of a break middle of the week, don't it? So I'm going to put this back in its case, um, and I'm going to start on this, regardless of what else I've got on the bench. I'm starting this first thing Wednesday morning. So that's that for now. I will come back and give you updates as and when. Oh, just one more thing before I go. I asked what pickups these were, and they are Iron Gear pickups now, which is amazing for me, because I've been buying some pickups lately, and I've not tried Iron Gear, but I want to. And I believe we've got a dirty torque there, and a rolling mill there, and it's fantastic, because I get to try these now, and I'll know what they sound like, and if I ever want any pickups in the future, I can go and get some Iron Gears, can't I? Uh, it'd be nice if I was a hot slag, because I wanted to try one of them, but you know, Beggars can't be choosers and all that, so that's it. I'm going to put this one away till Wednesday morning and um, I will come back and give you an update, let you know how we got on and uh, I will see you then. So Fret friends, um, we have a little problem with this um, Epiphone, beautiful Epiphone Les Paul. My beautiful guitar. And the problem being, when the owner bought it to me, he says the action was that high and the neck was that bent he altered the truss rod, but he, he says he didn't go any more than he'd altered the truss rod. But he got, he got it pretty straight. And I says, how far did you go on the truss rod? He says, what, as far as he felt comfortable with. So I went in. You see, there's your level of comfort and there's my level of comfort. Now, let's not get me wrong here. I, I've snapped truss rods before by, by tightening them, over tightening them. And so I kind of push it a little bit more than a regular person might do. And I've gone in there and I've tightened it to as far as I dare tighten it. And yet there is still relief in the neck. There is half a millimetre of relief in that neck when I've gone as tight as I go. And I've gone to the stage where if I go another eighth of a turn, right, the truss rod is gonna snap. So it's my suggestion that this guitar had a neck and truss rod problem when the guy bought it, and he bought it two weeks ago. And I've told him to go back to the owner and tell the owner right, that this has a truss rod problem. Uh, what's happened is, it's not so much with thread is stripped, it's, it's been over tightened over the years and it's now not giving us enough adjustment to get the neck perfectly straight. We've still got that little bit of relief in there. 
and whether it's the seller, it's not definitely not the buyer's fault, and I'm not saying it is the seller's fault, but what I'm saying is the guitar is not quite fit for purpose. Now, let's not be all super negative about this. The thing is, I must get that neck straight before I can level the frets because it needs a fret level. Um, and with the strings off, it's going to give me, I will have enough adjustment to get it straight. It's with the string tension on. Don't forget, when these strings are pulling, tuned into E standard, they're pulling about between 50 and 70 kilos on the neck, and the truss rod is going to pull it back. We're not getting enough adjustment on the truss rod to pull it right back straight. We can do it with the strings off, because we don't have to counteract that 60 kilograms of, of string tension or string pull. So once the strings are off, I will be able to level the frets but the thing is I will not be able to get the neck straight enough once I've got the strings back on and there's a way we can remedy this and I'm going to use an example of I'm going to use a screwdriver and an old truss rod lock if you just bear with me a second I should have got this ready before I started the video but I didn't so you're going to have to bear with a minute or two I've just had the thing and it's amazing that you can't find what you want when you just had it in your hand bear with Excellent news. Thank you for your patience. Right, well, it's absolutely not there where it should be. So, I'm going to use another example. Good bar one, this will do. This will do. So, let's say this is the truss rod adjuster. And let's say this is the truss rod. And what we do is with the adjuster on the truss rod, we tighten it or loosen it. And as we tighten it, it's going to pull the truss rod. It's going to pull it this way. And that's tightening the truss rod. Now, with this, we don't have enough thread to pull it far enough to straighten the neck. So what we're going to do is we're going to stick where this bites onto the edge of the wood of the guitar body. We're going to place a washer between the two. And I bought these washers specifically for this purpose. You have to pull up with the noise outside. It's the... Uh, bin man, the uh, refuse or man uh, taking the trash. Anyway, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to remove the truss rod nut, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to remove it and I'm going to place a washer over there. Then I'm going to put the truss rod nut back on and that wash, that then, the truss rod nut is going to tighten on the washer. It's going to give me more adjustment or it's going to give me more thread back. It's nearly nearly a millimetre there, so it's going to give me a millimetre of adjustment adjustment on the truss rod. Now that is a lot of adjustment, that's going to give me at least two full turns of a truss rod adjuster. Now, anyone that knows guitars and knows truss rods knows that a quarter of a turn is a lot. So if we've got two full turns, we've got eight quarters of turns. It means we're going to have enough adjustment. So that is how I'm going to fix the truss rod problem. And that adjuster in there, I'm going to remove I'm going to take it out completely, put the washer over the truss rod, like so, then put the adjuster back on. And it's going to give us the extra adjustment we need. Not a difficult fix, um, but something we can do. It's just good if we make the uh, ex, the last owner of this guitar before the guy bought it, the seller of the guitar, shall we call him, aware that this has become a problem. I know what I'm talking about, and this is going to cost uh, the new owner. It's not. It's not going to be cheap. I know it's not going to be expensive, but it's not going to be cheap. And some of the uh, some of that cost really should come from a seller of a guitar. So if you can buy a guitar three hundred quid, it wants hundred pound to work on it, you know, and you didn't know about the hundred pound to work on it when you bought it, then the seller is responsible for that. So hopefully, it gets a result out of that. That said. The guitar is fantastic. It's a really, really good looking guitar. It's got a couple of chips and dings. Uh, one there, one on the back here. This one I'm going to fill. I'm going to drop fill some dye in there, a little bit of ink or a little bit of dye. Just get it as colour matched as I can. And I'm going to drop, just drop some epoxy in there, just to seal up the hole. Because a chip fell off that last night, a tiny, tiny sliver. And it's just to tidy that up and keep everything in. I'm not going to do a full proper repair on that, you know, but it will cosmetically, from anything more than a few inches away, it'll look fantastic. So, so that's what I'm going to do with this guitar. I'm going to remove the strings. I'm replacing the nut. I think I do have a replacement nut. Um, I'm going to do the fret level today. Get it all taped up, get my neck all taped up, get it all on my jig behind me over there. It's more long-winded affair 
on a set or glued in neck guitar because I have to put the whole guitar on a jig whereas if it didn't have a glued or set in neck um, what I could do then is I could just do it like with a fender neck for instance I just bolt it to a piece of thick MDF and I can do it all away from the jig. Setting up the jig and that puts another hour on the job um, and getting it all you know and this area as well when you come to filing the frets in this area it, it, you've got to be very careful because you, your file wants to dig into the body so we have to mask all that off and it just takes longer because you have to take you really take your time so you know maybe in the future I'll look at charging different for a Les Paul type guitar over a Strat type guitar or a removable neck type guitar something I should consider because I'm doing the same job on a guitar but it's taking me an hour, hour and a half longer you know there ought to be some recompense for that so anyway I'm going to crack on, I'm going to get the strings off um, try and sort the truss rod problem out first, get the strings off, get the frets levelled blah de blah 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 and uh, we can get it all put back together, get it all ready the whole day today it is it's about 8.40am this is going to take me the whole day this because I'm going to put all my time into this one guitar um, so I'm going to crack on with it I will come back later and show you what we've done and um, I'll show you if we have fixed the truss rod problem right there friends I don't know how much you can see of these frets um, but I've marked some up and blue marker pen these areas that I'm pointing to some frets have got high areas more than others some have got two, two places high all the blue marker pen is where the frets are high akin to the frets around it so these are the ones I've got to alter what I'll be doing is I'll be skimming off all the blue areas with a flat file and once we've got them close to level with all the others around them then we're going to put it on uh, we're going to put it on the uh, jig on the other table over there and we're going to skim across the whole lot with one flat beam with a you've seen me use a sanding beam before it's a milled piece of steel about 16 inches long it's milled perfectly flat we'll go over with some 400 grit sandpaper and we'll smooth all of the frets in one go once I've removed the excess material on these frets uh, I'm just going to go across with a fret rocker uh, by the way I just want to mention I put a washer uh, between the uh, truss rod uh, between the truss rod and the truss rod adjuster we can now get enough adjustment on the um, truss rod to get the neck straight and there you go there is the neck absolutely level there's a tiny tiny gap under this area here but it's as close as we can get it to perfectly straight as possible now that is not an issue to me and it never is an issue to me because we're going to level the frets akin to where the neck is if I tighten that truss rod nut this would still not close but it, it closing it the areas at the ends of them fold down and we'd be less straight than we are now so we always go and do understand that this is my area of expertise, necks and frets, is where I concentrate all my um, energy. And just take my word for it that getting the neck as straight as you can is the most important thing. That is as straight, in my professional opinion, that is as straight as the neck will go. There's a tiny gap under there, but what we're going to do is going to level all the frets. So no matter what's happening underneath, you can see it as a, as a choppy sea. What, no matter what's happening underneath, as long as the frets are all perfectly level with each other and we have enough height, right? it's not going to make any difference to the way the guitar plays. Sometimes we cannot get a neck perfectly straight and this is one of those occasions. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to take across the fret rocker. For those of you who have not seen a fret rocker before it has four edges of varying lengths and the reason we have varying lengths is we test three frets at a time and this is perfectly straight and if we get a rock it means the middle one is high. And when we get to this end we'll be using this edge and if we get a rock like here, it means the middle one is high. So I'm going to go across all of the frets and show you where we're high. That one's okay here. Here it's fine. That's why I only mark two thirds of the fret because this area is fine. Next fret, take my word for it. Middle one's high, fine here. This one, high on that edge, but fine here. So I'm going to go across with the rocker now, and you can judge for yourself. All fine there. High, fine, 
high. This one's got two two edges of high. Fine at the edge, fine at the edge, high in the middle. Again, high at that edge, fine this side. Always three frets at a time. We've turned over here. Fine. Normally I say take my word for it, blah blah blah, but I don't always, when I say take my word for it, I still show you where we are. High. Now if I say something like 12 frets are high in various places, then you can take my word for it because I'm actually showing you, that's one I've missed there, that's high on that edge. So we now have 13 frets that are high in certain places. Always mark off with a pen where you're high and we know where we need to remove material. This one again, that edge and from the centre down to this edge is all high. This one's pretty okay all the way across till we get to this edge. I don't know if you can hear that. That again is a little bit high there, I missed that first time around. So just very strange when you get one where the edge is okay, you've got a high bit in the middle, and it's okay again, then you've got a high bit at the edge there. This is it's just showing the importance of checking every area of a fret. There you go. Fine there, then at this edge. High. And this one, you always seem to get the next to last one is always high all the way across. Not always. So there you go, we have got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen frets with high areas. It's amazing to think that a guitar plays mainly okay, but you bring it to a tech and they say, and I'll say with a bit of relief in my neck. You've got four eye frets, it means when we straighten it there will be more. And you leave the guitar with me and I go across and do this and there are like 13, 14 frets that are high. I've had so many fret levels in recently. Um, but once these are all level, we're going to flat spot all the frets. We're going to have to put a crown back in again. But once it's all done, we're never all level. Right, you're going to get a lower action. Not as low as this was, this was too low. It's always going to cause problems here. You always seem to get some problems around this area where the neck actually joins the body on a glued neck, I don't know why it is, and it's not just Epiphones, and it's not just cheaper PRSs or anything, This I'm talking Gibsons, Heritage, I'm talking high-end guitars, you always seem to get a problem where the neck joins the body. I can't say it's for all guitars, but in the past I've worked for a, 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 deal, a Heritage guitar dealer, and I guarantee that four out of ten of those guitars that come direct from Kalamazoo, some of them would have had eye frets around this area. Normally about, in my experience, 40%. I'm not saying that across the whole spectrum. Maybe the guy I was working for at the time would get by in seconds, I don't know. But they always add some dodgy frets around this area. So let's conclude to where we are with this guitar. We managed to get the neck straight by inserting a washer between the truss rod and the truss rod adjuster. Just the one washer. Um, the nut it came with, I don't know if you can see that, it's got a crack across here, well he said that it's been cracked across here, I've got a direct replacement, so we're going to replace the nut, we're going to level all the frets, I'm going to remove the blue areas just with a flat file, I'll use my number three Swiss file, once we get it close to where we need to be, um, we'll get it all jigged up on the jig over there, you'll see that later in the video, we'll get it all on the jig, get it all, all supported underneath and we're going to go across with a leveling beam, a sanding beam, we're going to level all the, fire, all, the fret, all the frets. Once they're all level, this area, the curved area of the fret, we call the crown. We're going to slightly flatten the crown by going across, then we're going to, to re-crown them again. And what we'll do is we'll get a thin strip down the centre where the string touches the fret. We'll get it down to about half, between a quarter and a half a millimetre once we've got the crown in. Because if you've got a flat file, the string is going to touch the whole flat file, it's going to cause buzz. But if you've got a crown, the string is only going to touch this part of the fret, it's, it's gonna, that's what stops buzzing, that's why we crown the files. So I'm going to crack on with doing this, I'm going to have to remove this, um, 
the three way there. I know he likes it this way, left to right, so I will put it back on left to right. I have to get that out of the way because when I'm doing these files up here, the file's going to hit this and it's no good being in the way. So I'll take the back off, we'll dink that in there, we'll put some tape over the top, we'll just hide that away for the time being. I'll drop the pickups in the guitar, I'll remove the bridge like so. We're going to, I can screw these into the body because we're going to. We're going to do a setup on the guitar anyway later. So that's all good. Remember that we have the screws that way. I'm going to have to do the intonation later. Um, and that is it. So I'm going to crack on with the work. Um, maybe next time Steve's guitar will all be taped up here. We'll all be ready for doing. I'm not going to film me doing the hand filing on these because I've done that on many videos before. So I'm going to crack on with the work and I'll come back and give you another update later. Just a quick update, just to show the progress of what we're going to be doing. You can see I've sunk in the pickups, I've taped over all of the guitar where we're going to be working over the body. We don't want to be dinging, because I've got to file these frets, we don't want to be dinging into the body and scratching the guitar. So we go with Scotch 3M uh, low tack masking tape. Um, this will enable me to get a file close in without digging into the body. I've dropped the three way um, inside the body, we'll sort that out and get that back up. Uh, obviously when we finish the work and now I can work on the guitar. I'm not going to tape up the whole fingerboard just yet because I need to maintain that we're keeping the neck level. Uh, that's just why I remove until I've removed all the blue areas. Once we're getting pretty close I'm going to tape up the fingerboard. I'll use some white scotch tape, masking tape and we'll tape up all the frets inside, well inside the frets should I say, all the neck inside the frets and we'll get it over on the jig and once we go across, we're not going to be dropping bits of uh, residue metal uh, into the wood. I mean, what I'll do is any time I work on a fret anyway, we'll give a quick dust off uh, with a cloth just to keep everything away from the guitar. We don't scratch anything. Ideally, you'd take the whole lot. You'd take a little bit off and you'd have to take the bit of thing is you're going to have to take the tape off again. So I find that it works this way. I'm just going to do a quick recap showing how I'm going to work these files. And I'm going with my truster. Swiss number three cut file. Uh, this is a Barco brand. Could do with a number four as well, but number three is absolutely fine. And what I'm going to be doing is where we have a high area, I'm going to work on one in the middle because I can actually, you can actually see that. One of these where it's high. All I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the fret file level. I'm going to support it underneath side. All I'm going to do is just go over the blue area. Careful not to dig into the guitar. And all I'm going to do is remove that blue line. until we get no rock. Still a tiny, tiny bit. The tripod's a little bit in my way here, but that's okay. And all I'm going to do is just a nice, smooth line. Not removing too much material. And there you go, there's no rock there now. So we've done that edge there, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to remove these small blue areas where there's a little bit of rock. And it's, you just take your time, I'm probably in the way there, but you just take your time, nice, smooth, action, not removing too much material, and there you go, we've got the, and we've got the now we've got it nice and level, because once we take some off there, we check the ones next to it, and we've still got no rock on the ones next to it, it means all these five are now all level down this edge, we've removed probably a tenth of a millimetre, maybe not even that on there, and that fret is now done. Now what we'll do is we'll get all the others done, and once they're all close, we're going to scoot across the whole lot, as explained with a levelling beam. So I will come back, and I shall give you another update as and when. And here we are with the uh, Epiphone all now up on the jig. You'll see that I've got it supported by the steel rods underneath. Four steel rods. We've got two um, dial gauges on there which shows, I'm going to zoom in, these are accurate to within a thousandth of an inch, right, and if we move this guitar, this guitar moves anywhere, right, these dials will let us know if we move a tiniest millimetre, so we've got them, as you can see, we've got them both zeroed out, uh, this is enable me to see if this guitar moves on this jig, I'll know about it, now, I'll keep my eye on these all the time, and what we're going to be doing is, I'm going to zoom back out. It may not look perfectly straight or level to you from where you are. Maybe it's just the angle of the camera because I've not set the tripod. 
but this is horizontal. It's not perfectly horizontal, but it's horizontal enough. We know that the neck is at least straight. What I'm going to be doing is, I'm going to be taping up all of the spaces between the frets with, I've got three different sizes of uh, masking tape that I use. <coughs> Uh, just so we don't dig anything or drop any dust or uh, filings onto the fingerboard and damage anything or get something stuck in there. We've taped up all the guitar so we can't dink anything. We've dropped the pickups in, we've took off a bridge and metal piece. Like I said, I'm going to tape up all these um, gaps between the frets. And then what I'm going to be doing is, I'll just show that we are level. The neck is absolutely level, or as level as I can get it. But that is more or less absolutely level. Uh, we know the frets are now all level. I've marked the top with marker pen and what we're going to do is we're going to go across, this is a levelling beam, this has been milled perfectly flat, I've got sandpaper on two sides, I've got 240 grit this side, 400 grit this side, no need to touch the 240, 240 is for removing much material, the uh, 400 grit is just for smoothing off, so all I'm going to do is basically I'm going to go across, in fact I'm probably going to go that way, just one way, and I'm going to remove all the pen from the top of the frets. I've not penned the whole lot yet. I'm going to take a marker pen. Another state or instance where you guys take my word for it. I'm just going to remove, put marker pen across each fret. Just across the top. One line. Not easy to do when you're bent over like this. Uh, but I'm going to do that across all the frets. And I'm just going to lightly file across. I'm going to let the beam take the weight. And we're just going to remove all that pen. It should happen in three or four strokes. Uh, you know, probably a little bit more than that. Maybe up to ten strokes we'll remove all the pen. Once it's all removed, we know that each fret is level with each other from the first to the last, or first to the last. Everything in between, we're all level with each other. And what we do then is we set about recrowning. But you know all about recrowning. You've seen it in many of my videos. So I'm going to crack on with I'm going to get this taped up, and I'm going to crack on with it. Um, I'll be back and show you another update again later. And there we go, I just wanted to show how we set up for levelling the frets. I've gone with marker pen across all the frets. I've been across with a fret rocker checking they're all more or less level, which they are. Uh, in fact they are level. And all I'm going to do now is I'm going to go across with the, the beam. And it's just a matter of a few strokes. I'm going to try to go in one direction. I'm going to start this edge. I've got one. How many goes is this? Less than a dozen. Not pressing down. And that's all the pen removed. And that's it. All the pen is gone off the top of all the frets. I would say that that means all these frets are now level. That's as much as you need to do when you're fret leveling. And we're level all across all of the frets, no rock anywhere. And I just wanted to get that on camera to show you how easy it really is. I'm not saying the job's easy because there's a lot more work to be done yet. We've now got to recrown all of these frets, and then we've got to polish the frets. Polishing is where the hard work comes in because the polishing takes a whole couple of hours easier. And the crowning, polishing with four grits of sandpaper. And finishing off with wire wall, but here look, we've got no rock anywhere. These frets are now level. So two jobs we've done so far. We have fixed the truss rod issue, and we have levelled the frets. What remains to be done is we need to crown the frets, polish the frets. Oh, a little bit of height there, right on the edge. I could take that out with a file in a bit, but we're good there. Everywhere else. We are good. If I remember that fret, I will take that out with file in a second. Which one was it? I believe. Just there, right on the edge, right there. Check again. Measure twice, cut once, so we know how it works. I'm just going to get in front of the camera for one second. And there you go, and I think that will be it. 
on each side. That's it, we're in, we're done. These frets are now all level. So it's a matter now of getting them all recrowned. Uh, I can zoom in a little. Don't know what if you're gonna, you're not gonna see the tops of the frets. But the pen has been removed from the tops of all the frets. So we're now ready to go recrown and polish. I'm gonna crack on with the work. I'm gonna do the work off camera because I'm running a little bit behind today. Um, it's not that I've, I've had to slip this, well I have slipped this in between other jobs. So I'm not worried about being a little bit behind, it's just I want to get cracking with this, I want to get this done, get it out of the way and um, we can talk to the owner and let him know where we are with it and that's it. So I will come back with a final update sometime later this afternoon. Right, I've given you a completely different angle, an angle I've never done before and the reason I'm doing this now is, there's been developments on this guitar, um, the neck was in such a bad way I mean it wouldn't straighten out on the truss rod as you know but there's been developments with the person who sold this guitar I thought it was a person and I was wrong it wasn't a person that sold this guitar it was a shop in Liverpool I don't know the name of the shop yet but I've, the owner or well, the seller has come back and it is trying all these dirty tricks so you know me uh, I will expose these people if they get a bit naughty and he's got a bit naughty and he said what's happened with the truss rod is oh it must have happened in transit so I've got back to the guy and I said, listen, that doesn't happen in transit. Right, it's not happened in transit. I've been doing this job over 30 years, right? I know guitars inside out. It's why I work frets and I work necks because it's a specialty subject and it's where I like to put my, um, all my learning and all my skills go into neck and fret repair because without the neck, and the, without the neck being straight and the frets being level, right? Your guitar is never going to be any good. So I profess that I am a specialist when it comes to necks and frets and I'm not bragging I'm just saying that's how it is right anyway the guy said it's probably happened in transit I says get back to him I says tell him it's not happened in transit right the adjuster was at the end of its thread right you could adjust the neck no more you could not get it straight the guitar was not fit for purpose right that is at a court of law we'll acknowledge that right I could go and get half a dozen luthiers Right, to back up my very word when I say this guitar was not fit for purpose. So I'm doing this for the owner uh, of the guitar and to make the seller aware that this guitar was not fit for purpose, right? And the guy who bought it should be given around about a 25% um, of his money back. He paid £280 for this guitar. I would expect him to get 70 quid back for this because it's going to cost him, it's costing him about 100 quid to get this put right. Um, but why I've got the camera at this angle, I'm going to show, you'll see these frets, I'm going to recrown them. What that means is where the frets are flat, right, I'm going to carve into the fret with a file, free edge file, ground edges, until we just get a thin line down the middle. And that means that the fret has gone from being uh, a flat fret to having, I can't do it this side because I'm wrong side of the camera, from being flat on the top we're going to put that crown back in, that curve back on the top of the fret. And that's where this line comes in. So I'm going to show, I'm, doing, I'm probably not going to explain too much because it's much easier for you to see. But I'm going to come, come across with the file and I've got the file vertical. And as I come across, I'm going to lean over, lean over, lean over, lean over till we get the thin line down the middle. I'm going to show you how it works because I could get a file that did the work for me, but I prefer to do this by hand. And you see how it's working. And I'm just leaning in more and more and more. And all we're doing is we're putting that curve back in the fret. And I'll turn the file over and I'll go to the other side. And the reason I'm showing this also is a lot of my subscribers on YouTube says no keep all those bits in those bits where you're working and showing us how it's done because we want to learn these things and there you go and we've put that's it so just the bottom of the string now is going to touch that thin line nowhere else we've put the curve or the crown back into that fret always every single time you do a fret wipe your file get all the bits off there and move on to the next one and I want to show this but I want to say to the person that sold this guitar to my friend right, that you may not have known about this guitar but what I'm telling you is right it was not fit for purpose the guitar and it's costing 100 quid to get this put right and you should be reimbursing the buyer of the guitar it's just out of good faith if you are a shop you don't want to get a bad name for yourself, you want, to, you want your customers to know that if there's anything wrong, you'll put it right. It's no good offering him another guitar like you have done, saying drive back up, fetch a guitar. You're in Liverpool, the client's in Nottingham. Right? That's no good. The best thing to do right, is reimburse. I'm going to ask that he gets 25% of his money back for this. Um, and I will expose the seller, I will expose the shop, and I'll say this is what's happened. Because I will back 
or back up with wire in this. Anyway, just wanted to show how we crown frets um, because I want to get this job done this afternoon. Well, we'll have a job done this afternoon, but look, just nice and easy. We don't need a lot removing because we've only moved a little bit off the top anyway. We've only removed a tenth of a millimetre, if that's so we're really easy to re crown. You know, it doesn't take a lot. Once this is all done, we'll get to polishing. Polishing is where the work comes in. Four grits of paper, steel wool, blah de, blah blah blah. You know how it works. So some of these hardly need touching because they've already been had to be levelled. And there you go. This is giving you an insight on how to crown files, uh, crown frets, crown files. And there you go. You see. And that's it. I think I've just done three or four there. Don't worry about these little nicks in the tape there. That's why we'll put the tape on so we don't mark the neck. And I'll do one more. Again, always wiping your file. Three edge file, grand flat edges. It means we're not going to cut in to the guitar when we get in there. A great piece of kit. I actually got this from Crimson Guitars. I don't buy anything from Crimson anymore because the price is too expensive. And I'm not mad keen on Ben Crow to be honest with you. It's a bit of a, a, bit of a dweeb who talks more rubbish than... Yeah. Anyway, that aside, look how these are working. Look, there you go. So that's it. That's our your crown frets. Got a few more to do. Got about got about eight or nine left to do, and then I can get on with the polishing. Once polishing's done, we can oil the fingerboard. Put some lemon oil in there. Uh, clean that up. Treat that. Treat the wood, and uh, dry that off, and get some strings on the guitar and um, it can go back to its owner tomorrow. So there you go, that's it, that's how to crown frets. So anyway, I've had my little rant, my little moan. Um, I'll be back with another update very soon. Right, just a really quick update because I've nearly finished this guitar. Um, you see the dials are still zeroed out. Uh, I've, been, I've done the polish, I've done two grades of sandpaper, I've got two more to do, I've got the 1500 to do, and the 2000 to do. Just a matter of, uh, just getting a polish across that way and getting right in the corners there. Just give it a right good polish, get a good shine on there, and we'll finish off with uh, with steel wool. I'm going to get this finished off in a minute. Uh, explain when we are. So all we've got to do now, really, is just finish the, finish the polishing with the two grains of paper. We'll do the final polishing with steel wool. I just want to give you an update on this on the uh, guy, not the owner of the guitar, the guy who bought it off the shop in Liverpool. He's offered my guy, my client, fifty quid, a fifty pound refund. So I've told him to take it. I said, because it pays for half of this job. I say, and for what you're paying, another 50, you're going to give me that 50 quid you're going to give to me. You know, I was going to have 50 to it, whatever. But what he's paying me is worth what he's getting here. He's getting completely level frets, re crown frets. It's, it's worth, it's, it would have cost him 55 quid out of his own pocket in the end. You're going to pay that any day of the week to get your, all your frets leveled, get your truss rod sorted out, and a new nut cut. I've not charged him for cutting a new nut. I've not charged him for the nut because he's a new client. Um, it's going to get a bang on guitar. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to finish off polishing these. I'm going to get the nut cut, get some strings on. We'll get it set up. We'll finish cutting the nut with the strings on. Um, and hopefully I will get it done tonight. I've spent an whole day on this because I've been faffing about. I've just had my SG plugged in. I've been in a little jam for an hour. I fancied a little break away from guitars for a bit because I've been quite busy today. Um, so I just want to show you an update on this. I will come back now and give you a fight. I'm not going to show you me cutting the nut. Um... I did put the nut somewhere, what have I done with it? Don't know what I've done with it. Get to bear with me. Oh, hang on, I've got it here. Old nut, new nut. Well, the new nut, is, it's got spring slots in it. That's a new nut. It's virtually the same as the old nut. Um, I may have to just cut them slots a little bit deeper, a little bit wider. That's the old one, that's the new one. They're the same size nut. I need to just shave a bit off that edge so it fits in the groove. Does it, does it fit? No, it doesn't quite fit look, in that slot. So I'm going to have to just shave a bit off this edge. I've got some sandpapers to do that. So we got that sorted. So that's it. That's really all I've got to do. I want to get this done today. It's took an old day really. So I'm not really, you know, it's not been a great payday for me today. Um, there's other things I should have been doing. But I'm bothered about that. that. It's all about customer satisfaction. He's got going away, going to go away with a guitar. He can be proud of. He can play and he can enjoy. He's got fifty quid back off the seller. End of the day, I'd have liked to have got seventy quid for him, but fifty quid's all right. It's better than no. And uh, he won't force to go anything, was he? So that's that. I'm going to get on with the guitar and I'm going to get it finished. And I'll come back when I've got it all set up. And you can see what it's like before it goes back to its owner. So the guitar is now off the jig. Um, 
I've polished the frets, cleaned them all up, I've glued on, I've shaped and glued on the new nuts, which is, uh, if you want to have a close look, there you go. I think you'll find that's all in order. Um, the frets have been levelled, polished, fingerboard has been cleaned, the neck is straight. That's it, we're ready to put on the strings. I've just put the bridge back on, cleaned the bridge up. Everything's been cleaned by the way, set a proper setup. up. Um, now we're ready to put on the strings. I'm going to go with, uh, because I suggested we go with a slightly lighter string, Ernie Ball 942's slinky pink, blah blah blah. Um, I'm going to go with 942, slightly lighter gauge of string. The frets are all absolutely level. I just want to, the idea of this video is just, to, this part of the video is just to show you the frets and where we are. Just to show you where we are with frets, just to show my fret work. Really, really proud of my fret and neck work. So I just want to get that on camera. And um, we're ready, so we're going to restring it. The grooves in the knot are probably likely not as deep as they need to be. I've glued the knot on, we're going to carve the knot with the strings on. Um, we'll probably need to go, some of them are probably going to need to be cut another millimetre deeper. Um, and I can show some off the top of the knot once I've got the strings in where they need to be. I normally aim for above the first fret, I'm going to aim for around about 0.4 of a millimetre on these three strings, 0.3 of a millimetre on the top three strings, that's above the first fret. Um, it's, a, it's a good guide. I'll go 0.4 all the way across and I'll just cut the high strings just that little bit deeper and that'll give us a really, really good action. It means when we finger a F chord or any one of the F areas or the first fret area, F, A sharp, D sharp, whatever, you know how it goes, it's going to actually fret the note, it's not going to be sharp. If you're not too high, your grooves aren't deep enough, you're going to fret sharp notes here, you don't want to be doing that. So uh, get it all cut nice, then we're going to set, we'll set the action this end, um, and we'll put a little bit of relief in the neck. The action on this when I got it was 1.25, definitely under 1.5 anyway, it was too low. Uh, but now the frets have all been levelled up all across the board, we probably will get a nice low action. I'm going to aim for something, if he wants it that low, I'm going to aim for about 1.5 on the low end, 1.3 on the high end. That's still low, might be too low, I don't know. I'm pretty confident we'll get down to that quite easily because as long as we've got the neck, a little bit of relief in the neck. Um, but it's not about that, it, it's about how the strings feel when, when you finger a note somewhere and you want your strings to be light. That's why I've gone for a slightly lighter gauge because it means we can go with a slightly higher action uh, but when we finger a note, we're still going to get that light. It's only going to take a light touch. Um, that's why I'm recommending we go with a slightly lower string and a slightly higher action. But we'll see how we go on once I've got strings on. And um, it, the next update, I guarantee, will be final update of this guitar. So I've had to snag with this um, Epiphone, with blue Epiphone um, guitar. I strung it up. Set the action, put a new nut on there, set the action, um, and I'm still getting notes fretting out up this end on the B string. So I've been across again with a fret rock, rocker meticulously over all these areas, and the frets are absolutely level everywhere. And I've not just checked in three places, I've checked one, two, three, four. Five, and I've gone all the way back to the 12th fret and the frets are absolutely bang on. So I started looking at the neck from this end down here and it seems a little bit twisted that way but I wouldn't have thought it was too much to worry about because I would have noticed that using the notch straight edge uh, before I leveled it. There's a tiny little bit of a waver there which shouldn't really affect anything because it's the frets I've leveled and again there but it's nothing that bad. I'm a bit worried that the uh, bridge is higher on this side than it is on that side, but then again, nothing to worry about. So I started to look at the bridge, and in particular, the saddles. Uh, these saddles, they're not right. That one should be turned this way, and this one should be turned that way, but also, I believe that this one, the E, I think that's the B one, and the B one is the E one. It means if we lower the action down to that, Right, it's going to make the action slightly higher, so we have to lo we lower down the bridge a little bit, and it's going to make this one that low. I think that's why it's fretting out, because I've had the action up to about 1.7, and we're getting no dead notes. I'm going to 
swap the solids around on this, I'm also going to try another bridge. But it's getting to the point now where I've spent a day and a half on this guitar. And I need to be cracking on with all the stuff. So, you know, and, and complaint out of the way. But this saddle is definitely, these saddles have definitely been altered. Because that's the wrong way around, that's the wrong way around. I think they've been put in the wrong way. And it's only, we're talking to a luthier friend of mine, Clive Eastwood from uh, Beaver Guitars. He just says them saddles don't look, strings don't look right on them saddles, and he's absolutely right. So I'm going to check this, I'm going to make sure the radius is right on the saddles. It might just mean a matter of changing the saddles or getting a new bridge, which is much better than sending the guitar back and having to faff about. So I'm going to see what I can do, I'm going to give another couple of hours on this guitar, and if I ain't got it done by dinner I'm knocking off and doing going on to something else. But I think I've got time to do it, it's just an annoying, one of those annoying things, something you don't normally think about, you know. Um, but I'm going to crack on with it and hopefully I'm going to get the problem solved. I'll let you know how I get on shortly. And there you go. And the saddles, all of them, were in the wrong positions. You don't just drop a saddle in uh, when you're swapping them about. These three here, these are the high E ones, or the high end ones, these three. You see how they get progressively thinner for a string. And these ones again, fattest to thinnest, to fat, thin, thin. I don't know what you can see there. They had to go in order because they get progressively thinner. They were in the wrong positions. It's no wonder some frets were high, uh, strings were higher and lower than others. That should sort the problem out. I'm hoping so because uh, there's nothing else I can think of. Now it's the first time I've come across this and it, it shouldn't have been the first time I've come across this. I've come across saddles in the wrong place before but not to this extent where I couldn't think of why it was still fretting out afterwards. And it's because the saddles were in the wrong places. So something else to check in the future and something that I'll be in mind of in the future. Now I'm going to get the strings back on and hopefully that will have sorted out the problem. Um, if that's not the case then I don't know what's wrong with it. The neck doesn't look bang on, it does look... It has got a bit of a twist. Not always something you can pick up with an up straight edge. That board should be re-radiused. I mean it's not bang on, there is a little twist in the neck. I could still recommend that my client send this back and get his money back, but at the end of the day, where's that leave me? You know, I've done a shift and half on this. I did not spend all yesterday on this when I should have been on some towels, and I've spent the best part of half a day. To, it, it's 11 o'clock. By the time I've got this done, it's lunchtime. It's, it's a complete, well, it's a complete shift. It, I've done a full day on this guitar, and uh, what for? I'm prepared to ride it off. I just say, put it down to experience, it's one of them things. Um, I'm sure the owner of this guitar, the guy who bought it around, will, will pay me for the nut and the strings. Um, and we'll see where it goes. But anyway, I'm going to get back together. I'm going to see if we can get it playing properly. Um, pretty hopeful now I've got them sorted. So, uh, again, I'll get back to you soon. And here we are, and I have set the guitar up, I've fin just finished cutting the knot, and lo and behold, it plays fine everywhere, even on the B string where it was fretting out. That said, as well as it plays now, and as good as it looks, I'm still not happy uh, with it. The reason being, right, I set up guitars. And I should be able to take a guitar and decide what's wrong with it and I should be able to set it up and it should then be absolutely fine and I'll be happy with it. This has not been the case with this guitar. Even when I'd set it up, and I, I admittedly I'd not cut the nut, uh, I'd not cut the slots on the nut properly, but it would not play right and I was getting dead notes. And I've had to do certain things. I've had to take the strings off, go and check the frets again, make sure they are all level. They are all level, they are all were level. And it came to a, a leafy friend of mine pointed out the saddles didn't look quite right. So I checked the saddles, they weren't right. So I, I adjusted the saddles and made that right. And I think you can see now if you have a look. Done the saddles, they're all exactly how they should be. I've set the intonation again. Still wasn't playing right. I've now gone and cut the slots in the knot to the correct depth. Between 0.3 and 0.4 millimetres height above the first fret. And we are, the guitar is playing fine. I mean the big problem was the B string. Right up this here, here, it was deading out, the notes were deading out. And now we're absolutely fine. 
and that's great but it's been a struggle to get there and it shouldn't have been a struggle to get there i'm still not happy with the neck i mean it is straight we've got some relief in there now but i even with a washer inserted between the truss rod and the adjuster i could still not get the neck perfectly straight it still had a tiny bit of relief underneath i should have been able to get that some back bow in that neck and i could get some back bow without the strings on but I was really on the last turn of a thread and it did frighten me a bit turning it. I know when a truss rod's gonna snap. I've, I've snapped one before and it's not a good feeling, but when you get to a certain level of tightness and you think that's gonna go in a minute and you've still got not, not got your neck straight, then there's something wrong. Now, the, the seller of this guitar, the shop in Liverpool, has got back to the buyer who bought the, my client and he said that guitar left me in A1 condition. So it didn't. I'll tell you straight now, no it did not. You might have believed it was in A1 condition, but it wasn't. The nut had been broken, glued back together. The neck could not be set straight on the truss rod. Um, and my saddles were the wrong way round and some were in the wrong places. A saddle has a notch in a V shape and a groove for a string. And they get wider from a thick string to a thin string. They get wider and thinner. They were all in the wrong places, so it's giving us different heights everywhere. So it was nowhere near in A1 condition. So whoever you are, Mr. Bloat in Liverpool, whatever shop you run, right, I'm calling you out on this, right? This guitar was not in A1 condition. And I would be recommending to the, to the buyer, uh, James, I'll be recommending to him, if he hadn't got my fee to pay, right, I'll be recommending he send this back. Thing is now, I've done a complete fret level and a complete setup on this, and it's had a day and a half of my time, which I can't get that back. And I could, have, I could have made a lot more money doing other things. But you know me, I want to get the guitars right. By rights, the guy should be getting his money back and he should be getting compensation. If James wants to send the guitar back to the owner, I will back him up. I've also talked to other luthier friends of mine. Uh, in the main, Clive Eastwood from Bieber Guitars out in Grantham there. And um, we've talked about the guitar and the problems. Um, end of the day, I've got back up. James has got back up because I'm his back up. And the guy... All right, so if he wanted to get his money back and my fee back, he should be able to. And if it went to, even even if it went to a small claims court, uh, my client James would win. So there you go. But I, d I don't know if he wants to go down that avenue. I've said to him, keep the guitar because it does play fantastic now. And any problems in the future, I will be able to sort out. But end of the day, um, the guitar was not fit for purpose when James received it. So, you know, he's got an absolute good, re he's got a perfectly legitimate reason to return the guitar and get fees with his mouth, there's going to be mouth fees on top. So that's it, the guitar is done. What remains for me to do now is to just cut, um, I could file down the nut, I've got the truss rod cover to put on and that's it. I think the nut looks fine as it is. I can leave it like that, I can send it back. I've also fixed slightly that chip was it. All I've done is put some, I've just put some marker pen in there, blued it up and covered it in a little bit of glue just to stop it, the chips falling out again. The guitar itself plays fine, looks fine. So, you know, it's all up to James now. Um, you know, what I'm saying is, keep it. Keep it for a couple of days. If it gives you no more problems, keep hold of it, keep it. It plays absolutely wonderful. So that's it. Been a long-winded project. It's a long one I wanted it to be. I'm not... I'm not... I'm more angry than anything. I'm not grumpy, I'm not, I'm not a moaner. It's just this guitar has taken more work than it ought to have done to get right. And the reason is because of the neck. And you all know, I'm fret friend, I'm all about the neck and all about the frets. And if the neck's not right, the guitar's never gonna be right. But you've got to get the neck right, then get the frets right. Because without the neck and frets being right, the guitar will never be right. You get the neck and the frets right, you get the neck right, start with. You, first thing, make sure the truss rod's working both ways. It wasn't on this and still isn't working perfectly. You know, and the frets, the frets are now leveled, they weren't level. I'm not 100% happy about that. I think, still think it, has, it is a good guitar and it, it plays perfect now, it plays fantastic. It's, you do want to risk keeping it and it's staying playing fine and perfect. There's no reason why it shouldn't. Or do you suspect it might deteriorate in the future? There's always ways we can look at. We can always add another washer to the truss rod if we don't get enough bend on there. Sometimes the truss rods don't go in quite well, right. You do get a little twist in there. Maybe I'm being over cautious. I don't know. Maybe it's because I've had one snap. I don't know. But anyway, that's it. 
that's this project wrapped up. I'm going to put the guitar back in its case. Uh, the owner's going to come and collect it tomorrow. All being well, it'll keep the guitar and it'll play fine. Uh, I would make the, the shop owner aware that he's keeping the guitar for a while, but if he has any problems within the next two or three months, right, he's going to return it for a full refund. And I think that's to be fair on all sides. Uh, I'm not going to name the shop or the seller uh, because it's not fair to do that right now because he has offered some compensation, but it's just let's just see how that goes. So that's it, it's the end of his project. It's probably taken this video well into an hour, much longer than I wanted it to be, but we've had problems on the way. But that's it now, I've got to blob on with something else. I'm going to go and grab myself from lunch, uh, grab myself some lunch, I say, uh, get me a couple of gallons of water down my neck, freshen up, get a bit of fresh air, might go for a little walk and I can crack on with something else this afternoon. So that's it. So, as always, be good to each other, and I will see you again soon.